This is the second video about the MiG-21. The first video is about the development and the variants and operations of the MiG. If you haven't seen it yet, please check it out. There's a link in the description below. In this part, we will look at some of the many quirks and features of the MiG-21. We will start with exterior and finish in the cockpit. This is a MiG-21 BIS from the Finnish Air Force. It is a third generation MiG-21 and is displayed on the roof of a shopping mall in Helsinki. Most of the footage in this video is of this aircraft and assist the aircraft at the Finnish Aviation Museum, plus a second generation MiG-21 PFM painted in the colors of North Vietnam Air Force and displayed at the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum in New York. This example has a general camouflage because one of the tactics used by the North Vietnamese was to ambush American fighter bombers from below. Starting at the front, we have the air data probe. It is very long because it has to be ahead of the aircraft where the airflow is not disturbed by the presence of the aircraft in order to give accurate readings to the flight instruments. At the tip, there is a pitot tube. It registers the total air pressure. Further aft, there are holes perpendicular to the airflow. They are static ports and register the static air pressure. The altimeter uses static air pressure. The airspeed indicator shows the dynamic air pressure this is the difference between total air pressure and static air pressure. In addition, there are two horizontal vanes registering the angle of attack and two vertical vanes registering the side slip angle. A second pitot tube provides backup in case of the primary pitot tube has failed. The nose cone can move fore and aft and hoses a radar. Those holes are for boundary air control. Turbulent air near the surface is sucked inside and discarded through two ducts, one above and one below the nose. This is an angle of attack vane. This is a flap door that opens outwards in case the air pressure in the air intake is too high. A similar door is located further aft, but this opens inwards and allows for more air to enter the engine. You will see this door open when the engine is running while the aircraft is on the ground. This is a deflector to prevent debris from up by the nose wheel from being sucked into the engine. Just above the nose gear door, we have what appears to be an air temperature probe. The nose wheel retracts forward and has hydraulic steering. A unique feature with the MiG-21 is that the nose wheel has a disc brake. Very few aircraft have this. The brake is operated with compressed air. I will come back to that later. Forward of the nose wheel are antennas for IFF, identification friend or foe. If you don't transmit the correct code, you might be shot down. The windscreen is bulletproof but it's very thick and it restricts the forward view. This latch is used to open and close the canopy. This is the rear view mirror. Behind this panel is a circuit breaker panel. A tripped circuit breaker should never be reset. So this is a safe location out of reach for the pilot. And those antennas look like antennas for transponder, TME and other Western radio equipment installed by the Finnish Air Force. This is an intake for fuel ventilation. Below the wing root are power connectors for 28.5 volt DC and 115 volt AC external power. Further down is one of the three air brakes. They operate by hydraulic power there are two on the forward part and one on the aft part of the fuselage. The aft air brake cannot be used when there is an external tank under the fuselage. 
This tank holds 490 liters of fuel and can be used at supersonic speed up to Mach 1.5, if my source is correct. The main landing gear retracts partially forward and sideways into the fuselage. The main wheels rotate 87 degrees and are stored vertically inside the fuselage. And because of that, you will see a pretty complicated mechanism here. The landing gear is operated with hydraulic power and has pneumatic multi-disc brakes. When looking into the wheel well, you see many lines and cables. There are many pressure switches here. I assume they are placed here for ease of maintenance. And this is an electrical relay, by the way. Mikko Jangurevich is known for using yellow fuel lines. And this might be a ventilation duct from the fuel tanks. And the blue bottle here is one of six bottles in each wing used to store compressed air for the brakes. The bottles can only be charged on the ground, so you better avoid braking too much before you take off. Or you will not have brakes when you land. Depending on the variant, there is one or two hard points under the wings. This is an UB-16 rocket launcher, and as the number suggests, it can carry 16 rockets. And this aircraft is equipped with the R-13 infrared missile, which is a copy of the AIM-9 Sidewinder. The leading edge of the wing is a straight line. Here is a navigation light. This fence straightens the airflow over the wing, especially at high angle of attack. The MiG-21 has one fence on each wing. The MiG-17 has three. This is not a pitot tube, but an antenna for the radio altimeter. This is not a fuel dump line, but a static discharger. The ailerons are conventional and quite large. Together with a short wingspan, the ailerons provide a very good roll rate. Here you can see the aft air brake. This might be an access door to some of the systems run by the engine. For example, pumps and generators. The flaps is quite small. Starting with the second generation, the MiG-21 got blown flaps, which means bleeder from the engine compressor is blown over the flaps to increase lift. Those ducts are for cooling of the afterburner section. This is the housing for the drag chute. It was necessary on early models because they had poor brakes. From the second generation onwards, the brakes are much better. This fairing hides the controlling to the tailplane. The hydraulic actuator is located inside the tail fin and controls both tailplanes. The tailplanes are all moving, which is standard for supersonic fighters. When viewed from above, you can see the balance weight, which prevents flutter at high speeds. This purge houses a remote compass. And this tiny antenna is for the radar warning receiver. This area is for a data link antenna. And up there is the tail navigation light and a static discharger. And this is the business end of the MiG-21. The MiG-21Bs is powered by the Tumansky R25-300. It delivers 40.2 kN thrust in military power, 69.6 kN with afterburner, and then it has an overdrive called extra power, giving 97.1 kN. This rating is limited to 3 minutes, in part one of these videos, I said two minutes, but the correct time is three. Anyway, this gives the MiG-21 a climb rate similar to the F-16. <laughs> o 
Okay, let's complete the walk around. And that concludes the walk around. Let's have a look inside the cockpit. The MiG-21 has a chaotic cockpit. There are buttons everywhere and they are arranged in no apparent order. Before we step inside, you can notice the strut holding the canopy in open position and the head support for the pilot, which is quite special. The cockpit is pressurized and you can see the rubber seal around the canopy frame. I assume it's inflated with pressurized air when the canopy is closed. This is the cockpit of a MiG-21 bis of the Finnish Air Force. It has been modified with Western avionics and during the process of installing the equipment they had to improvise. And the cockpit is even more chaotic than the original. The cockpit has labels in Russian, Finnish and English. And there are instruments behind the control stick all the way down to the floor level. They are indications for many systems like engine oil pressure, brake pressure, battery capacity and cockpit pressure. At the top we had a head-up display, the HUD, with a ton of controls for targeting. On the windshield frame there are two lights that warn against high angle of attack. And now let's take a quick glance around the cockpit before we start with the details. This instrument panel belongs to a MiG-21 in a museum. Apparently, some of the instruments have been removed, swapped and reinserted in the wrong place. This is an engine RPM indicator. It belongs to the right side of the instrument panel, where the other engine indications are. What's missing is the speed indicator. It looks like this. And here, there are two identical temperature indicators. This is the correct one, and the RPM indicator belongs to here. Finally, this instrument is also wrong. What we see is a turn and slip indicator, but we are missing the vertical speed indicator, which is embedded in the turn and slip indicator. It looks like this. OK, then we are ready to continue.
And that's all I know, or pretend to know, about this airplane. Hopefully I got most of it right. I have skipped some switches because I was not able to identify the function. And that's all I have for this time. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends on all that. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and happy learning!